Martin Indyk spent much of the 1990s as American ambassador to Israel and as a high-level negotiator trying to secure peace in the Middle East. He has written Innocent Abroad to help America learn from its mistakes. Two of those errors were underestimating our opponents and assuming that they see what we see and want what we want. It's not just that they're clever, but they've had a lot of experience dealing with outside powers. The Middle East is geostrategically located, so that it's always been a territory contested by superpowers or great powers throughout history. And so they have it in their genes. They know how to deal with us, how to divert us, how to resist us, uh, or how to turn our, our power to their purpose. And, and the Iranians, because they too live in a strategic environment, you know, they've got Pakistan and Afghanistan on, on one border, they've got Iraq on the other, the Russians up, up to the mm. north, uh, and then there's the United States and Europe. So, I mean, they're, they're looking out at the world and they're figuring out how they're going to survive. And exactly as you said, we, we announced, and this was you know, my strategic genius, you know, um, that uh, you know, we were going to make comprehensive peace between the Israelis and the Arabs. That was our first objective. And our second objective in parallel was we were going to isolate Iran and isolate Syria. We called it, uh, excuse me, isolate Iraq. We call it the dual containment strategy. It was a strategy with two branches. Contain the Iraqi rogue Saddam Hussein and the Iranian revolutionary mullahs and make peace between Israel and the Arabs. And, and the Iranians looked at this and said, OK, uh, if he's trying to make peace and isolate us, the best way to stop them from succeeding isolating us is to stop them from making peace. And they used their proxies, particularly Hezbollah at that time and Palestine Islamic Jihad, to disrupt the whole peace process. Now, I believe, and I recount this story in, in the book, that they were responsible more than anybody else for the defeat of Shimon Peres after Yitzhak Rabin was assassinated and the rise of Bibi Netanyahu. I think it worked much more successfully than they imagined, but they used Hezbollah rocket fire into Israel to provoke an Israeli attack, which then cost him the Arab vote, and that was the end of him, and, and the end of the peace process for that time. What, what the lesson from this is, I think, exactly what Obama uh, seems to be starting to do, which is, yes, to seek comprehensive peace, to try to draw the Syrians into the peace process, but to understand that that is deeply threatening to the Iranians. And not to say to the Iranians, we're going to isolate you, but to say exactly what he said. If you unclench your fist, you'll, we'll meet you with an open hand. So to tell the Iranians, we're not trying to isolate you. We're willing to have you be a partner in this effort to con construct a more peaceful order in the Middle East. But it's your choice. If you want to go continue on the way of Ahmadinejad, then you have chosen to isolate yourself. It's not us that's isolating. And I think that's a critically important approach. It seems, again, this goes back to understanding the narratives and having good intelligence. Yes, but you know, he, here's the challenge with the Iranians. We haven't been talking to them for 30 years on any official level. You know, and, and Much are, less listening. Right. We don't have a feel for them. They don't have a feel for us either, by the way. Isn't there you know, a lesson in that? <laughs> listening is critically important um, because you then pick up the nuances. You build trust because if people feel that you're listening to them, but you also hear what they're saying. If you start to listen to what their problem is, this was a, a true lesson for me in negotiations. Uh, and it was actually when I was dealing with the Israelis, was to sit down and try to draw them out, try to get them to explain what their problem was with what we were trying to get them to do. Because then you can try to be creative in finding ways to answer their, their problems. But if you're not talking to them, you can't possibly hear that. And so that's why engaging with the Iranians becomes so important. Sit down with them and try to understand where they're coming from. Because obviously we're not going to give up our interests. We cannot accept a, a, a nuclear Iran without terrible consequences for the whole region. So we, we have to understand this. Why do they want nuclear weapons? What is it that's driving them? What is the insecurity there? 
And can we find a way to treat that insecurity so that they don't need nuclear weapons?